Good morning again, everyone. Pastor Bruce here, and I want to talk to you about Psalm 50, verse 23. And this is the memory verse for Gospel for Life Session 2. And so I thought I'd go over it uh, just to help you memorize it um, this week. So the first thing I noticed, uh, if you were following along with the last video, is that I want to I want to break down this passage into um, chunks that are easier to memorize. And Psalm Psalms always lends itself to that. It um, because of the structure of the Psalms being um, poetry, uh, they break down into various kinds of parallelism. So we see right here this punctuation, and always remember the punctuation is a, is a huge help for us in seeing the divisions of, of the um, sentences, the parts. And so if I was memorizing this, I would work on, on this first part until I've got it well enough where I didn't have to look at the words, and then I would work on the second part and add that to the first part again until I didn't have to look at it. And then I could just repeat those words in my mind over and over um, until I could say it uh, fluently without um, stuttering or going, um. <laughs> and uh, that, that way you have it down in your heart. So um, just a little practical advice there. Now let's look at this verse a little more closely. And we can see that these two parts are parallel because we see here the one who and to one who um, so it's got a very similar uh, beginning and then they do something right one uh, offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice and the other one orders his way rightly and then there's an effect to that right the the end result of Offering thanksgiving as a sacrifice glorifies me. Now, it's important to identify our pronoun. So, me here is talking about God. God is actually doing the talking in the psalm, in most of the psalm. And so, me here is referring to God. So, in order to glorify God, we give him thanks as our sacrifice. God is not looking for your work. He does not need your work. He wants your thanksgiving. Now, why do we give thanks to someone? Well, normally because they've done something kind to us. Um, and usually it's not because uh, they have to, but it's because they want to do something kind for us. And it's not because we deserve it, oftentimes it's because um, they want to do it out of the goodness of their heart. They do something for you that's kind, that you didn't ask for, that you didn't deserve. And what what's your response from that? It's thanksgiving. God is our gracious Savior. He does things for us that we do not deserve. He shows his kindness towards us, um, not because we earned it or have done something great. Um, God is the great one, and he is doing something for us. And as we give thanks to him, that's acknowledging that God has done something wonderful for us. And when you acknowledge that, that glorifies God. Now the second part, to the one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. Now this, this word, the Hebrew word here for orders his way, is talking about um, putting something in place. Um, it's it's a, a common word for... Um, used in the Old Testament in a variety of ways. So like uh, David putting the stones in his pouch to put something in its place. Uh, here, when we talk about ordering his way rightly, um, we're talking about 
um, uh, being determined in the direction you want to go. You, you have a committed way. And when your committed way is right, then the result is God will show the salvation of God. Now, the salvation of God, it could be referring to eternal life, but I kind of lean away from that. I kind of see it as a God saving ways um, that he does it in our in our temporal circumstances um, that he is there as our help. Um, that, that's how I interpret this idea of salvation of God. And so to the one who orders his way rightly, um, I will show the salvation of God. Now, as we look at the psalm, I'm going to argue that what this means, order his way rightly, is talking about seeing God for who he truly is and seeing you for who you truly are and making sure that um, our orientation is in the right direction. In other words, God is the provider. We are, we are the needy. He is the need meter. And when we, when we are oriented toward him, always looking toward him, that is, I think, what he means here by ordering his way rightly. So let's just look briefly at this psalm and what's going on here. So we'll just start reading from the beginning here. Uh, the Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. God, Our God comes. He does not keep silent. This is going to show up a little later on. God does not keep silent. Before him is a devouring fire, around him a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. So here we have God showing up as judge, and that's exactly what's going to happen in a moment here. So he, he's setting the stage, and, and um, he says, gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Now here I think the idea of faithful ones is not that they were acting faithful at the moment, but these are the ones who by covenant uh, have, have committed themselves to God. So then he goes on. Uh, the heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. So now we have the courtroom set. Um, and now the judge speaks. Hear, O my people, I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. I, I think the emphasis here on that little line on these pronouns. Uh, they, they have no problem acknowledging that God is God, but that there are other gods as well. Um, and God doesn't have their full heart. And I think the emphasis here is he's saying, I will testify against you. And here's the testimony. I am God, your God. And so now he's clarifying not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, or your burnt offerings are continually before me. So he, God is not upset that they are offering sacrifices and burnt offerings. So what, what's making him upset? I will, he says, I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds, for every beast of the field is mine. The cattle on a thousand hills, 
I know all the birds of the hills, and all that moves in the field is mine. He continues on, If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. I do not eat flesh of bulls <clears throat> or drink the blood of goats. Or do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? And the obvious answer is no, I don't. And so what he's condemning them for is a kind of sacrifice that the implication here is that they're offering a sacrifice, but offering a sacrifice to God as if he needed these things. And that will become more clear as we continue down the psalm. And he says, what, what should we do? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. That's, that's what I want from you. And perform your vows before the, or to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. So this is, this is why I'm saying that salvation of God is not necessarily um, eternal salvation. But in the day of trouble, God comes to save the day. That kind of idea. So call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. So that's the kind of thanksgiving that God wants, the kind of sacrifice, I'm sorry, the sa sacrifice that God wants. He wants us to call on him in the day of trouble. Look to him to deliver you, and in that you shall glorify me. You glorify God by calling on him, and you glorify God by thanking him for his gracious work in your life. He goes on, but to the wicked, God says, what right have you to recite my statutes or take my covenants on your my covenant on your lips? For you hate discipline. You hate discipline, and you cast my words behind you. If you see a thief, you are pleased with him, and you keep company with adulterers. You give your mouth free rein for evil, and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I have been silent. Remember the reference to silence up above, that he will not remain silent? During this, he has been silent, but he does not remain silent. Look what he says. These things you have done, and I have been silent. You thought that I was like a thief. So now he's speaking up, right? You thought that I was one like yourself, as if I needed stuff, needed your food to supply me. And yet God was just saying, I don't need anything from you. You need from me. So you thought that I was one like yourself. So he had a, a wrong, they had a wrong view of who God was. And they had a wrong view of themselves and what they could offer to God. But now I rebuke you. I now speak up. I don't remain silent. And I lay the charge before you. Mark this then, you who forget God. Again, this is this forgetting is not, oh, I, I didn't even remember God. The person God. That, that's not this. This is this is the idea of taking God lightly, not seeing him for who he is, not seeing him as the holy God that he is, but forgetting God. Ah, it, he doesn't matter. So mark this then, you who forget God, lest I tear you apart and there be none to deliver. The one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. And to the one who says, God is God and I am not, 
You are the need meter. I am the need. I have the need. And God is the one who I ought to be oriented toward, not some other God or some other thing, or um, you don't love and pursue and dream about something other than God. When you order your way rightly, you say, God is enough. God is what I want. God is what I desire even right now in this situation that I'm facing. And when I have that particular orientation, I will see the hand of God working in my life. Now, God may not solve the problem the way you expect, but God is working in your heart to transform you. That's what he's all about. And so, what's our takeaway? Let's live lives that constantly give thanks to God. Let that be your sacrifice. Don't sit there and say, well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go evangelize the, uh, the grocery store clerk because I've got this thing coming up and if I do something good for God, maybe he'll do something good for me. No, we are the needy ones, and God is the need needer. So see him as he truly is. Give thanks to him, and in that, you give glory to God. That is the right way of living. We hope this has been a help to you, and we'll see you next time.